There's so many different ways to be able to check your battery, your alternator, and your starters on your vehicles and different things that run on batteries these days. And most of us are pretty familiar with units like this. However, today I'm gonna to explain to you why a carbon pile tester is probably still the best way to check your vehicle, even with the new technology still in the market, the old school still prevails. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. I'll explain this carbon pile tester and then why you might wanna have either both of these on hand or maybe just stick with the old school. If you're anything like me, you're probably checking multiple batteries. Maybe you've got multiple vehicles or maybe you even work at a shop and you're testing batteries on a daily basis. When it comes to these new school testers like you have right here, every one or two out of maybe 100 batteries that you'll check, you'll come across an instance where maybe you've got a false positive. Especially around the time of year where temperatures start to swing heavily between seasons, you may notice that the battery's testing good, but the vehicle's still not starting when it sits overnight. And that happens from time to time with these little units like this. However, if you get into one of these carbon pile load testers that's made by solar in this instance, you have a couple different models you could pick up. Now I went ahead and picked up one of these 1000 amp models because even though they've got a 500 amp model on the market, and the reason I did that is the 1000 amp model is going to be able to cover a lot more different sizes of batteries. So for example, your diesel vehicles and vehicles that have the much larger batteries that are over the 1000 cool cranking amp rating, this 1000 amp model is gonna probably do you guys a lot better. Or if you're at a shop, you may just wanna be able to cover all the batteries and not have to worry about ever having one you couldn't check. That 500 amp model though, you can pick that up, save yourself a little bit of money, and that's gonna be great for someone that's got just a small car in the garage, maybe they're testing small batteries, things that like golf carts, or they're gonna be testing like little battery powered scooters that you put your kids on, things like that. Those what those 500 amps are gonna be great for. So once you've picked your model as to which one of these might fit best for you in your application, you're also gonna notice that this will test six volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt. So it's gonna cover all those batteries I just mentioned, no matter what you get into. Now if you've never used one of these before, essentially this is a fully analog way and it's gonna be a mechanical way of checking your battery, but also it's got the ability to still check your alternator and your starters, things of that nature as well. And you're gonna have analog gauges here. So the one downfall to that is it's not gonna be as easy to just push a couple buttons on like one of your little testers like this. You do actually have to watch the gauges and know a little bit about that. Don't sweat that too much though, because honestly, if you've read through this manual, when, which comes with your unit when you buy it, they do a really good job of laying out the instructions as to how this unit operates, best practices, and how you're gonna get the best results out of the unit. You're also gonna have on the side of the unit here, this handy little chart, and that's gonna be based on temperature based on which voltage rating you're looking at at the same time. So essentially, you're gonna to wanna to try to do all your testing in optimal conditions, which is gonna be like 70 degrees and over. However, if you have to test this outside and it's in the middle of the winter, they do give you the voltage rating. So if it's 12 volts at like 30 degrees, you're gonna see the voltage drop rating you're looking for, and that's gonna let you know whether your battery is in the good range or the bad range, and you need to replace that unit. Also, like I mentioned, it does do alternators as well. This would be a test that you do with your battery in the car while it's running, and it's gonna tell you all the different parameters you're looking for as far as what your voltage reading will be on your alternator. You're gonna load the vehicle down based on the size of the vehicle as well. Most cars are gonna be in that 100 amp range or so. However, in some of your bigger trucks, you might be able to run that up as high as 200. And then you'll just simply run your knob over to watch your amperage gauge on here. Once you hit the desired setting on here, you'll watch for your voltage drop to see what that's gonna be. Now with that being said, I do have a battery right here that I know needs to be replaced here in the near future. I'm kind of babying it along until I can get around and get the battery put in this vehicle for me. Now this battery here is a side post mount. It's gonna be a 690 cold cranking amp rated battery. So let's go ahead and hook this up here. I have already done my test with this meter here and I know this battery needs to replace. So I wanna see if this thing actually agrees with my little bit newer school tester that I use most of the time. Now obviously something else to keep in mind too, I'm hooking this up. This is obviously a lot bigger unit than like something like this would be. These are really convenient because you can kind of take them easy on the fly, throw them in the vehicle and go. They come in a nice convenient storage case. However, like I mentioned, to avoid those false positives, something like this is kind of a tried and true way. Uh, this technology has existed for years and it's usually always gonna give you a lot more accurate result. Now you notice here too, you've also got these nice long leads. They're about four foot in length. They come with super heavy duty clamps on them. And then the wire here is extremely heavy duty as well. And that's mainly due because you're basically dealing with up to a thousand amps on this unit. So you're gonna make sure that the cables can handle the heat that they're gonna produce. So we'll go ahead and stick this on the side post here and get a good bite on that. And then I'll go ahead and put my negative on here. Something to keep in mind on the side post like this, I've got this on the bench. You're either gonna to need to take the side post logs out of your vehicle and bring them into the shop with you to be able to hook this up. Or and like in my case, I've just got some in the toolbox that I can temporarily throw it into this battery so I can get these clamps to clamp onto the side of the battery. Now you hear the fan ramp up on this unit. I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys up close on the unit so you can watch the gauges. So looking at these gauges, as you can see here, your first thing you'll be looking for is do you have around 12.6 volts on the battery? If you've got more than that, you need to probably take the surface charge down on the battery and get it into that acceptable range. So 12.6 is what we're looking at to start the test with. If you're under that 
12.6 volts. When you get your initial reading, you're gonna to wanna to throw this battery on the charger, whether it be a trickle charger or back in the vehicle, and go ahead and try to get that battery fully charged back up before you actually run this test. We're sitting right at the okay to test mark, at that 12.6 mark. When we run this up, we're gonna run it, basically you get your amps, your amp hours, and your CCAs. What we're looking for here is we're gonna run this up to half of the amperage that the battery's rated at, so 690 co-cranking amps. We're basically looking at for 345 amps on this top scale up here. And then this blue scale is gonna correlate with that as well so that you're gonna see uh, that 690 should be right in line with what the amperage is that we're putting on this. So when we run this up, you watch the gauges here. We'll let this run for 15 seconds. And what you're gonna notice, after 15 seconds, you're gonna get an audible beep letting you know that test is done. And you're gonna to wanna to get this turned off because if you leave that on for too long, it'll actually start creating too much heat and you'll start seeing smoke come out of the battery. So let's go ahead and run this test now. And we'll get this up to that 345 volts we're looking for. And you hear it bog down. And right about there, is what we're looking for. We'll let that run. You can see right here that my needle is in the red at the moment and 21 degrees Celsius is the same as 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There's our beep. Run that back down. And you can see on this unit now that we really need to replace the battery. It's in that red zone. It's time to get a new battery in this vehicle. Now, like I mentioned, this time around, both these testers lined up and they both agree that the battery needs to be replaced. However, I have seen on several occasions when I've tested vehicles or like tractors out here on the property, especially when it's like in that 40 to 50 degree range or when you first start getting those cold plunges, that's when batteries tend to fail the most if they've got any age to them. And I have seen false positives come out of this little Foxwell unit that I own. And while I still really love that unit, and that's always the go-to when I grab it, if I get a test result that I just don't necessarily think I agree with, this is now gonna be the unit I can go as a backup and look at that battery and get a second opinion on. And I know this one's gonna be tried and true and give me an accurate result. And then obviously, like I mentioned, you can also test the alternators and starters with this as well. And that could be for a separate video another day, but I wanna go ahead and just give you a quick overview as to how this unit actually works and who this unit might be for. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to go ahead and make a decision as to whether this unit might be something that you might wanna put in your shop or garage or not. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. We'll catch you guys on the next video video.